good evening today we'll be discussing about quotation of iota it is a unique disease which is of interest to us from the fetal stage to the elderly age so coarctation in the fetus is its own problems once you have diagnosed coarctation in the fetus what happens in the neonatal period is an issue in it itself if you have mutation or if the coarctation is presenting later that is a different issue they grow up into hypertensy whether women become pregnant that issue uh, becomes a problem so in future we be reviewing coarctation from a age related perspective and a presentation related perspective you all coarctation is nothing of the iota at any point in the transverse arch technically by definition right down to iliac bifurcation a congenital narrowing could be called coarctation but for practical purposes you are speaking of a narrowing of the isthmus usually accompanied by a transverse arch hypoplasia in the neonate and it's slightly more common in males than in females in terms of incidence and prevalence it accounts for 7% of all congenital heart diseases and it is the fourth commonest cause for cardiac surgery or catheter intervention in the first year of life this mri image it shows a discrete coarctation this is the typical ischemic coarctation and something that you are very unlikely reach unlikely to see in a new born in a child this present may be seen but in a new neonate usually there is a problem with the aortic arch it is common in neonatal coarct that in one large series from france 81% had arch hypoplasia in my vs center in muscat where coarct was very common problem for a new neonate it was 6 months of 2005 when i was making a study out of 20 cases had significant arch hypoplasia which required to be surgically addressed and in an earlier center of mine in abu dhabi we had at an old age 41 days not too old older it was prevalent uh, it was an 8 out of 21 cases the point that the king is the younger the age of presentation the more likely you are likely to see coarctation transfer lacuge series with an age of 13 days look no hypoplasia seen only 19% this from abu dhabi we found no hypoplasia in 8% where the age of presentation was a month and plus what mercedes from muscat the no hypoplasia was 30% the uh, mean nine days so the bottom line look for arch hypoplasia expect arch hypoplasia if you're seeing it in your unit contrast when you see arch hypoplasia if you doubt about coarctation take it for granted that coarctation is there but of arch hypoplasia that we are referring in this image there is of course a tetrasmial coarct but look at the the length of the isthmus is long isthmus which is tapering down to typical post subclavian coarct the transverse arch itself is not bad whereas this image the isthmal coarct is there which is tight but the disc transverse arch is a very long narrow thing which will need to be addressed if this entity is to be meaningfully repaired therefore come to see how do you label the aortic arch and how do you measure it look at this i should thank francois lacuge for pairing this image with me here in the distal ascending aorta you can see it this way just before bifurcation the prox transverse arch is segment between the brachiocephalic or the nominate and the left common carotid so this is the transverse arch and measure it from inner lumen to inner lumen uh, you measure it in a echo you can do it in a mri or a, a ct image the isosart is a segment from the left common carotid to the left subclavian usually is longer than the proximal 
the problem can be so short that in that all the cells are arising together. Then beyond that subclavian, till the ductus is what you call isthmus. And the ductal is the coarctation. What is hypoplasia? On an eyeballing, if you arch diameter, even than 50% of the dinding aorta at the level of diaphragm, it is hypoplasia. You can measure it, not necessarily eyeball, but the eyeballing gives you the first clue. Now, why is the dinding aorta? As an aorta is generally not taken because an aorta in coarctation is susceptible to dilatation on its own right. You have a larger standard with which you are comparing, where the disiota at the level of diaphragm is fixed. The size of that is fixed by the age of the baby and the weight of the baby. That's why the denominator is the iota at the level of the diaphragm. Again, like the uh, axiom, arch diameter, and if you look to the body weight, the applicable to neonate or young infant only, weight plus one millimeter is the expected diameter of the transverse arch. Smaller than that, the arch requires to be enlarged. This uh, option we attribute to Roger Mee, who uh, had a firing work in congenital heart surgery. Many of you would wear the name of Roger Mee, who has influenced the thinking of generation. Treated by C-scores for both. So there are C-scores for each component of art for transverse art, proximal, distal, everything there is C-score. So you know that if um, the score is more than minus 2, you are dealing with hypoplasia. And um, these are different ways of looking at the same thing. When you are in doubt, you looking at a parameter and using multiple parameters would enhance accuracy. That we are spending this much of time on our hypoplasia. One, determinant of surgical strategy. For instance, if you have only SMEL coarctation in the patient to surgery, and by a left thoracotomy, optimal, uh, forget it, if you have distal transverse arch hypoplasia along with an SMEL coarctation, then you can still do it from a left thoracotomy, but the surgery becomes an extended into anastomosis. I'll explain what is tended into endonestomosis to the beginners. There are for doing from left thoracotomy also. And the intervention is point of view. A discrete ismail coarctation means you can balloon dilate it and usually with good result. Determinant of surgical or interventional strategy, uh, arc dimensions are important. As a determinant of surgical outcome, it's an important thing. For instance, when you have a transverse arch hypoplasia or a transverse arch hypoplasia as an ismail coarctation with none of this outcome measures are worse with transverse arch hypoplasia proximal transverse arch hypoplasia to the surgeons would want from the midline it would require great cerebral perfusion and uh, the long term outcomes are not as good as an isolated ismail coarctation Terms like mortality and freedom from reintervention will depend on the arch dimension. And from interventional strategy, let's show exactly why what is the relevance from interventional strategy. Our choice of balloon stent, whether we need to do an arch stenting, this will depend on the arch morphology and the arch dimensions. Quite often in the neonate, a problem that you would encounter is diagnosing coarctation in presence of PDA. Why is it a problem? Technically, if you are feeling the femorals, you are bounding femorals. And um, recognizing the contraductive shell is often in presence of coarctation, uh, in presence of large PDA. Yes. Where you thought there was no shell, the closure of the duct initiates the process there. The contradict shelf is appearing and progressing. After all, the pathogen 
the coarctation, one of the most popular areas is the ductal shoe in the contraductal wall of the iota, and the duct is constricting. That ductal tissue in the contraductal wall also constricts, and hence coarctation appears. Different measure than the actual visualization of the contraductal shelf have also been suggested by different people. One of them is a carotid subnatri index. Now, what is meant? This is the diameter of the distal transverse arch. Look at the length of the distal transverse arch. Now, meter of distal transverse arch uh, divide the left subclavian to the left common carotid artery distance. This meter should be the length. Your distal transfers are fine, and that there is unlikely to be coarctation. If it is 1.5% normal, and if 5, it is normal. But the index is less than 0.85. In other words, your transfer starts diameter is only 0.85 of the length of the distal arch or smaller. That there is an ismail coarctation. This is mentioned earlier. The hypoplasia is such an important component of coarctation in the neonate that is significant that transfers are hypoplasia. Take for granted that there would be coarctation. Also taken the darker of the aortic isthmus. When you have a clearly shown aortic isthmus related to the descending aorta at the level of the diaphragm. It should be more than two thirds. In other words, isthmus should be more than two thirds below the diota at the left, at diaphragm. If it's that, there is coarctation. Look for, of course, clinically, any, uh, in presence of a PDA, any delayed femoral pulse or a, um, the difference between the upper limb and the lower limb of the posterior shell. Utilize these in and do not conclude on skill examination. Be careful like this, you can avoid missing coarctation in the new unit. Look at the presentation, what you are likely to see. These are all real life presentations that I have taken from my musket experience. A 37 year old infant has increasing pallor, tachypnea, and respiratory disease. Physical examination reveals an enlarged liver. There is a gallop. Pulpor in the upper extremities, absent in the lower extremities. This is how a classic presentation of coarctation occurs in a newborn. Notice it is in day two. Why two? The duct is constricting. He said that even the upper limb pulses are weak. The child has gone into shock. It may not always present like this. It present later in infancy. You may have heart failure, which is progressive from the first month or later. Or the patient has observed when the baby came for a vaccination that the lower limb pulses are rigid. Some enough to actually auscultate and pick up a murmur and brew it. The murmur from bicuspidiotic valve, brew from actually coarctation. There is upper hypertension. Or oh, cardiomyopathy like presentation, you know, then unexplained heart failure, unexplained within quotes until you felt the lower limb pulses. So, in a you may at six weeks, after a few days of poor feeding and tachypnea, the baby presents with hypotension, apt femoral pulses, and severe metabolic acidosis. Then, the heart allowed on test takes, and there is capitomegaly. And echo shows clear LV dysfunction, which is mistaken for dilated cardiomyopathy. So this is the cardiomyopathy-like presentation. Coarctation, the neonatal infant, who is diagnostic. There are instances when you need a CT angio or CAT or MRI in certain cases. Contrary to what you would think, in spite of a lot of effort on echo, you may need Difficult to answer a surgeon's question showing the diameter of the proximal transverse arch. Where you have difficult
difficulty is when the proximal transverse arch is so small. Very difficult for you to say with confidence this normal, you can do the surgery from left thoracotomy. Such instances, going for a composite imaging using MRI or more likely CT because MRI in a new unit is rather difficult, that would be the thing to do. And uh, actual treatment for the neck in shock, start prostaglandin, along with supportive measures, which would include fluids, inotropes, ventilation if necessary, correction of acidosis, of course. And you would proceed surgery. It's the procedure of choice in the first three months of life. And in new unit, uh, on, especially on day one, without surgery is the procedure of choice. But if the baby has grown beyond three months and is presenting, there is greater likelihood that you are dealing with isolated, discrete ismial coarctation. This entity yields well to balloon dilatation. And in do in coarctation, it of course opens the ductus. And um, if the coact is extreme or if it's interruption, the prostatin would supply the descending aortic perfusion if the coact frame. But even if the coact is not that severe or not um, having a duct dependent systemic circulation, when it opens, well, the diaphragm increases. So anti grade flow is possible because the duct is open and widening the diameter at the level of the isthmus. So the reasons why prostaglandin is full in a neonatal coarctation. The coarctation that you should know, syndrome, uh, percent have coarctation I had just last month. Bicuspid valve, 50% so if it is coarctation, proactively look for bicuspid aortic valve, which is ever being small in the ALV, the inflow, outflow and arc. So, instruction, parachute, mitral valve, and coarctation. Even about this, mitral regurgitation cannot occur. And cardiac problems, very aneurysm, and polycystic kidney can also occur. Art could be just the tip of the iceberg. This line I borrowed from Francois Lacouguet. We make that point okay, that coarctation or interruption could occur with a major intracardiac anomaly. So in the newborn period, you can't handle the coarctation without addressing the intracardiac problem. It could be deviate of obstruction, totally caused by a posterior deviation of the septum. It may be a dying lesion like TGA or a toxic being anomaly. In these cases, hypoplasia and the ascending iota to be smaller. This can also be ventricle and when everything is small it becomes hypoplastic left heart. So I have scenarios of neonatal coarctation as I said all the cases are from a National Heart Center Musket. We have preterm presented in day nine in shock. The baby only 1.4 kg, body surface level was just 0.14 to see this male coact. The disc was 5 millimeter, the arc is 3 millimeter. We overnight on prostin and dinotropes. The baby underwent a simple resection and end to end anastomosis with a good result. These were just what you look at the transverse is all right. Here is the the double shell and the coarctation. The machine are shown here. So this baby, uh, they, uh, this was actually done after stabilizing the baby prior to taking the child to the theater. This baby did very well, a simple reaction and then to end an estimosis. Case presents a different presentation where it is a month old baby presenting for a heart murmur, so sent back by the pediatrician. Weight point eight kg. The blood pressure in the upper limb was at adult level, 130-70, with a low limb, 70 by 40. Femoral pulses were feeble. 
So this baby had a proximal and distal arch hypoplasia with coaptation, no cardiac lesion. The proximal arch, sorry. So if you see, this is image, the proximal is not terrible. You can set the with the transverse arch hypoplastic, the issue flow is coming around the contradictions and a small duct which is shunting left, left to right. Look at this again. The discharge is small and the flow is curving around the contradictal shell. In a different sense, the tip of this book patient. Day 2 baby, which had presented in shock, weight 2.4 kg, it was sick being an anomaly with coarctation. Here, look at this, how uh, thread-like is the isthmus. Um, you can see the duct to descending aorta continuity. This is the PA, duct and descending aorta. In arch repair by resection and extended end to end anastomosis, there was a small dual arch gradient after repair. The idea was to tolerate the, uh, to do a band also, but the baby did not tolerate PA band. So we kept him on ventilator and we did an arterial switch two weeks later. The weaning period, the baby had sepsis and the baby required a prolonged ventilation, but eventually went home. And, um, Coarctation is a problem in the fetus also. And the reason why I've titled this presentation as from the fetus to the adult. The traditional shell is difficult to visualize in the fetus. Plus, the coarctation is a progressive lesion. So it is unusual for coarctation to be diagnosed because you found a tight contradictal uh, in the fetus. The fetus of coarctation involves appreciation of the smallness of the isthmus, iota, A, plus other features. So we need to emphasize and relate the isthmus to the diet of the ductus. It should be three-fourth. The diet should be at least three-fourth the diameter of the duct. Duct is bigger. If you the way uh, the duct joins the isthmus, the angle should be less than 125 degree. Uh, it's 125 normal. If it's less than 125, there is a possibility that the isthmus is small and therefore coarctation is evolving. Today, the scores of the isthmus relating to the femur or the gestation leg, this can be used. If the artery is unduly large, the central pulmonary artery is larger, the iota. But if it's more than 1.6 times the iota, there should be some coarctation. Also, the LV in mid cavity and compare it with the RV in mid cavity in second trimester. If it's less than 0 0.6, there's a chance of coarctation. Multiple parameters, you have better predictive accuracy for critical coarctation than you in it. And following up in pregnancy longitudinally, could also enhance the accuracy of diagnosis. The preservation 4D uh, echo machines used for fetal echo would definitely pick up more coarctation than we used to pick up 10 years ago. This is an example of the problem with the fetal aortic arch. It's an arch like this. There's no problem. There's no coarctation. But when you have an arch like this, here you can see that the transverse arch is small, and this is the the level of the diaphragm. So with this small arch, even though you are not seeing a coarctation here, it is likely that this baby could present with critical coarctation in the neonate. And today you also need to have a plan if there has been an antenatal suspicion of coarctation. Antenatal diagnosis of coarctation, if it is there, that's a different story. So if the diagnosis is firm at birth, or as in the first few hours, Assess the lower limb pulses and the forelimb limb blood pressure. It may not be abnormal until ductus closes, but if you clearly see arch hypoplasia, 
put the baby on first glance. Other, you may monitor the baby, instruct the neonatologist to um, check the lower limb pulses very frequently. You may not find clinically evident coarctation. Then you need to follow up with four limb BP and lower limb pulses uh, until echo is done and maybe need to repeat the echo. And then even once you have a strong suspicion or firm diagnosis. If you have an echo, it's a baby home. But if you have suspicion in fetal echo, review after four to six weeks. Cocked could appear even in six months. Remove progressive disease. Therefore, don't be taken aback when you thought that neutral, there was no coarctation, but at three months, there is definite coarctation. This is because there is progressive constriction of the ectopic ductal tissue. What happens to coarctation babies? You need to look at old data to the natural history. The origin major natural history study by Campbell covered coarctation also, where average survival was 35 years, and death was due to heart failure in a quarter, it rupture in 21% as in iota, in 18%, or intracranial bleed 11%. I prefer to different techniques of surgical repair. Uh, you, you know what is meant by this, and uh, how does your diagnosis impact the choice. Indicate coarctation surgery in neonates and infants. If you diagnose coarctation, generally it would require surgery. It may cause of uh, congestive heart failure, no doubt. But if there is upper limb hypertension with a limited gradient, that's an indication for coarctation. So I would say that if you clearly feel the lower limb pulses are delayed or weak, they are going to find the gradient of 20 millimeter plus, and therefore the diagnosis would warrant uh, so, old adults, generally it is on the basis of upper limb hypertension. Now, there are techniques which are involved in this. Section and end-to-end -end anastomosis. Written and extended end-to-end -end anastomosis. Flavian flap angioplasty. Flavian flap or reverse flavian flap as an adjunct to extended end-to-end. -end. Uh, cardiopulmonary bypass with anti grade cerebral perfusion. The, uh, I acknowledge the help from Professor Francois and Dr. John Velliet in the different techniques for surgical surgery of coarctation in the pictures that you are going to see. Risk and end anastomosis had been described uh, in 1944. It is one of the first cardiac surgeries to be done. Extenestimosis when there is an arch hypoplasia. Skin flap and its modifications I'll come to. Enlargement of arch or iota, people don't like to do it, but at some times it's needed. Integrate cerebral perfusion uh, for arch repair from median sternotomy when there is either associated intracardiac repair or when there is proximal arch hypoplasia. Yeah. What is meant by resection and then to end anastomosis? Uh, look at these cartoons carefully. Here, the chart itself is okay, but it must be smaller. So the surgeon is resecting and re ligating the duct uh, and cutting it so that he mobilizes the iota. The iota is mobilized to a point on the del transverse arch or beyond the left subclavian. So that's on the left subclavian onto the transverse arch. And this is how the repair like. So this final repair would look like, this image would show you how the final repair looks like. But this would work if the distance of the arch is hypoplastic. As you can see here, here, proximal transverse arch is okay. See this image, the ascending iota, proximal arch is okay, distal arch has clearly become smaller. So then, the onto the avian involves the proximal transverse arch at its junction with the uh, uh, this was that. In other words, the clamp is just beyond the left common carotid. And you create an oblique on the surface of the arch and the eye mobilized and anastomosed here. The eye is having in into distal transverse arch and create an oblique anastomosis 
the surgeon is in a position to eliminate the narrowing of the distal transverse shaft. You may aim to see the anastomosis. Uh, surgeons do this even my surgeon does, even from the uh, left thoracotomy. You can realize the uh, the iota and the anastomosis to the upper of the ascending iota. Most surgeons would want to do this under a cardiopulmonary bypass from the front. You sacrifice the subclavian, you split open, the subclavian uh, is tied off. The proxyclavian is used as the same tap to augment the segment of the coarctation. When Sin originally described it, he did not reject the coarctation, so it associated with a high risk of restenosis, and this went out of favor. Later, Several surgeons found that this was a useful technique. We already resected the coarctation. The still looks small. You can use this to augment that coarctation segment. And small surgeons put it in the reverse also to enlarge the distal transverse shaft. If you uh, if you reflect it backward, you can use it to augment the distal transverse shaft also. What happens after repair? There has been a paper uh, from uh, Toronto where it is shown that there is catch up growth of both transverse arch and dismiss with time in many, many. In other words, if you have done a good neonatal repair, there is a fair chance that the arch would actually grow with time and you may not require intervention. In series, in my own personal experience also, many after neonatal repair would be with arch hypoplasia and gradient between the upper and lower limbs. If the scores are high, high scores will be all through. If your arch was good, all along your arch would be good. But till the smallest initial C scores also to grow fast. Surgery versus intervention. In, the, uh, in 2005, angioplasty was compared for surgery for native coarctation in childhood. Remember, it is in childhood, not in the new age. The six rates were similar, but atom formation was more likely with balloon dilatation, and their freedom from re-intervention was more for surgery. Treatment of coarctation, we have three ways of approaching it. It can be balloon dilatation, it can be a prime stenting, or it can be a covered Assessing the arch for intervention, like this three year old child, 17 kg, you can see that cock is quite discreet. And to assess it, look at the you of course need the transverse arch measurement. You measure the distal transverse arch here, you measure the the isthma, the beginning, you see the, the level of the coarctation, and also you take the iota at the level of the diaphragm. So when you the balloon, a it's up, you have proximal segment plus one millimeter. In this case, it is 9.1 proximal segment. So take 10 millimeter balloon. You should not take seed the delta at the level of the diaphragm. Here, descending area is 16 millimeter. So 10 millimeter will definitely make seed. And if you are looking at the coag diameter, do more than three times if you're simply doing a balloon dilatation. So if your cork is as small as two millimeter, you can go up to six millimeter. If you to blow it up to ten millimeter without the support of a stent, the higher risk of aneurysm or rupture. Uh, coarctation post balloon in the patient that, that um, uh, I showed and measured the arc. You may find there's a very tiny area of aneurysm here, which uh, was followed up. There was no problem later on. Moving from the uh, intervention, presentation in the older child and the adult, not at all uncommon uh, in India, yeah, it's hypertension in the young. And it can be for uncontrolled hypertension in the middle age. Why separate these two? See, we find a hyper 10 year old or 15 year old child coarctation is high up in the card. 
when you are being a 50 year old man with hypertension you may not think of coarctation as a first possibility but when you have a difficult to control hypertension always consider a possibility of coarctation or tachycardia arthritis and at the habit of your hand going to the lower limb pulses as part of routine examination we travel many cases of coarctation you or you can because of an aortic valve murmur i fear sorry yeah it may be a stress presentation with a renal hemorrhage or dissection presenting with claudication is uncommon but it can occur and detection somebody really examined the lower limb pulses and found that there is coarctation in a person who had no symptoms can also occur there are some the old child and adult that you should be familiar with in the general examination in a patient with coarctation look for any associated syndromes turner syndrome and in your general examination see if the upper limb muscles are better developed than the lower limb muscles so any sternotomy or sternotomy scar because you may be seeing re coarctation in the see, look for limb hypertension hypertension difficult to control that may be the history in an older patient look femoral or brachiofemoral delay look for difference between the two upper limb pulses if the cause is involving the left subclavian the left upper limb pulse will also be weak so perhaps diminish perhaps in left you call it presubclavian coarctation you could weak right radial pulse also if an aberrant radial arising distal to the coarctation from the descending aorta you would get a weak right radial pulse prominent external pulsations should always make you suspect coarctation and bulbar palpable collaterals should make you think of coarctation all look at this leg this is an actual image from one of my elderly patients both the internal mammary arteries are dilated when the mammary arteries are dilated remember the mammary artery would uh, divide into superior epigastric and musculophrenic the superior epigastric is coming down and main inferior epigastric which is the external iliac and therefore uh, if the person is thin when you make stand up you can see the collaterals on the anterior abdominal wall Early, scapula, you get the pulsations. So if you the uh, the person standing forward, try touch his toes and sort of interdigitate your fingers with the wrist posterior or with the angle scapula. Then you get pulsations. Scott Cushman. pal pain feeder angles of scapulae with the pain forward and the editing pulsations on the inferior angle of scapula is called the susman sign in a you for rip notching and uh, how does it notching occur the internal mammary artery you have anterior in the costal in there is a uh, is a branch of subclavian so it is pre coarctation posterior in the costal which is from the descending aorta so post coarctation and lesions of this dilated posterior in the costal that is the reason for rip notch it does occur in the first two in the costal spaces so the posterior in the costal do not come from the descending aorta in the first two in the costal spaces classically seen in 3 to 6 and when you part from the obvious pulse difference an apex ejection plate which is a constant click over the apex and aortic area every aortic stenosis or regurgitation in the left interscapular region a cunt murmur over the collaterals these are the findings that you should be looking for this book picture at this the lower end of the rib which is irregular sporting both features the the split appears to the lower end of the rib so the irregularity it 
happens because the vessels are pulsating and eroding it. Plus, in the A, you would also find a constriction beyond dilated aortic knuckle, which in a medium swallow will appear as an E sign because you have a dilated um, aorta and less subclavian, the constriction itself, and a post aortic dilatation. This is a reverse E sign or 3 sign in the uh, medium swallow. In the east, you can look for LVH, may left axis deviation. You may find strain in this case. There is a lit with strain. The major diagnostic, you should uh, find the conductor uh, shelf. Look for the dog gradient. Import the diastolic kill is the important part. The diastolic kill always denotes significant coarctation. If you're just looking at a systolic flow, remember a small child could have flow velocity of 2.5 or 3, and especially with the eastern like by PDA, you make a gradient, what looks like gradient of uh, 3 tests in descending aorta. But if diastolic tail, it's absolutely important. We have all referred to the importance of measuring the arts. I'm fond of asking you, is this pseudo-coarctation or is this a coarctation when you're seeing an older uh, child or adult? The come, this is coarctation, this is pseudo-coarctation, what has happened here? In coarctation, hypertension is invariable. In pseudo-coarctation, it is variable. You can have a normal blood pressure with pseudo-coarctation. But dealt with the hypertension may show a pseudo coarctation also. It's narrowing is a feature of coarctation. The luminal narrowing, leave alone isthmus, in coarctation. And for the reason, if you look for your radial or radiofemoral delay, no such thing in pseudo coarctation. Well, these are the features of coarctation. And so the arch or kinking. Uh, in coarctation, the arch also occurs in pseudo coarctation. It shows an abnormal position of the arch higher up in the mediastinum than normal, and hence kinking. Rhipnolatus do not occur in pseudo coarctation. Coarctation the older child and the adult. Once you have the older child and the adult, transcatheter management is preferred over surgery. Balloon dilation in smaller children, stenting in older children and adults, um, covered stents would make even tortuous corks in older adults manageable. If you dimple balloon angioplasty, probably coarctation, and aneurysm formation, and the insertion would prevent elastic recoil of the iota. It will provide better and more predictable results. So it's preferable for complex aortic arch obstructions, but to older patients, limitations associated with growth is better avoided until the child is fully grown uh, for children under 10 years of age. There is less vascular injury, it tacks sentinel flaps to the wall of the iota, reinforces weakened areas, reduces the incidence of aneurysm formation. Examples. This five year old male presented uh, because of a murmur, but otherwise he was asymptomatic. His upper blood pressure was 160 90 and lower limb 130 90. There was a murmur in the back. ECG is normal. Echo coagulated at 70 millimeters, amlodipine and beta blocker. There was a gradient of 40. This was caution. You can see. CTO is an invaluable tool in the old patient with coarctation because you want to see collaterals, you want to see anatomy well. It's generally not uh, enough to have a co in these patients. Either MRI. So here that uh, there is very narrow segment. They are self being all right. find this, the 
intent has been implanted here. Uh, you may not, the, the image is not great, but appreciate that the isthmus has become deep in diameter. Tenting also has complications, aneurysm formation, death, neurologic damage, mercifully these are uncommon. But the fact that these can occur have a need for covered stents. Covered stents are essentially metal stents where there is a PTFE coating. PTFE coating is the guarantee that if you are dissecting, the PTFE takes over, spreads to the iota, and, and takes care of the dissection. It may be a rescue treatment when you find urisms when there is a stent-related complication, or primary treatment when you anticipate that there is a greater risk of complications. Uh, in an old patient, say, beyond the third decade, the risk of vascular injury is more. In a tortuous lesion, the risk of vascular injury is more. So in these instances, you will definitely use a covered stent. So in to a 43-year-old female, distinctly undergone an aortic valve replacement 10 years earlier and um, had missed the coarctation. She came in with um, rejection of the, the biprosthetic valve. And um, clearly there was coarctation and the CT and you showed coarctation built to the left subclavian and multiple collaterals. So several drugs and her hypertension was uncontrolled. Uh, pulses were not palpable in the lower limb. Blood pressure was 160 by 70 on the various drugs that she was taking. Quite significant cardiomegaly. And there was an cystic brewery in the back. So you can sort to coarctation this 43-year-old woman. Uh, we wouldn't dare to go with a simple metal stent. So this um, the angio is showing the um, and uh, the stent is being deployed there. This is a case of atrium. Final result. The was a try dilatation with a small balloon to see how much of it yields. You can see that the final result is very good. And in this day, that was in six months, she was only on a beta blocker diuretic combination for her control of hypertension. Adults, you also encounter a different problem. Okay, you have repaired a coarctation. You have either treated with um, catheter or it has been operated earlier. When you do term follow in these people, there are a number of problems that you should be look, looking for. Local vascular problems are the easiest to think about. The, um, the, the, uh, you have aortic dilatation with or without aortic valve. You have a deuce arteriopathy in coarctation with cystic medial changes, fractation of elastin, or composites in ascending iota and paracoact iota. You can have hypertension because mild arch hypoplasia, re coarct, setting of renin angiotensin aldosterone system, resetting of the baroreceptors. As a result of this, half the coarctations treated in infancy have hypertension at three years of age. Primary disease, aortic valve disease, subaortic stenosis, mitral valve disease, very neurism, post kidney, all these are long term problems in repaired coarctation. And could be pregnancy with coarctation either native or repaired. Pre conception evaluation and counseling is required. It's a 5 to 7 percent risk of congenital heart disease in the fetus hypertension, aneurysm, residual coarctation, um, residency or hypertension, preaxia, dissection, and aortic rupture. The rupture are more with dilatation and aneurysm. Agitation is more with bicuspid aortic valve. Well, I'm referring to dilatation of the ascending aorta. You multidisciplinary team to manage pregnancy, meticulous BP control, beta blockers, Monitor ascending aortic size and aneurysm size. Serial MRI may be needed. Don't use gadolinium in pregnancy. Delivery 
you are looking for assisted second stage to shorten it. In fact, you ended up prophylaxis needed. There are instances where in second trimester interventions have gone in and extended the coagulation. Uh, this child is currently with us in the ward. The uh, third year old child, the only child of the parents from Madura, had neutral balloon aortic valvotomy for CA and fecal repair of coarctation two months later, and with a VSD closure from the front. She had dilatation for re at six months and at two years. And she left hemiplegia for viral prodrome. And ECHO had shown a very poor LV contraction with thrombus. We attributed it to viral myocarditis. She had great arch hypoplasia. Over the years, her arch hypoplasia became more severe and yet persistent upper limb hypertension. Current uh, M, you can see that the arch is quite small. You can see the transverse arch. And um, the isthmus is very long and narrow. You can see LV is dilated. So what is, our surgeon has put a disc graft here and connected it to bending iota here from a left trachotomy. I'm seeing the arch gradient completely. This case, which I had taken from cases in adult congenital heart disease, 44 man presenting with hypertension, coactive at three years of age, MRI shows significant re coaptation. He already had an episode of fatal fibrillation. And this, this, is, this is the sort of thing that you're going to find in adults. A cardiac MRI showing an angulated arch with a distal arch hypoplasia. And the hemodynamics showing that the ascending aorta is 165 by 73 and descending aorta is 1. 114 by 58, the PA are normal. This is an arch stent, and see what the the like after stenting. And the arch stent, uh, it tends to look absolutely transverse on the X-ray. You may be sure that an X-ray for comment. Thank you. Any questions? If you have.